Well, uh, hello everyone. My name is Mats Larsen and I'm uh, Head of Advocacy in uh, the Norwegian Cyclists Association. And I'm going to talk about experiences of uh, Norwegian winter maintenance uh, standards from a user perspective and from a user organization perspective. So, why is winter maintenance uh, important? And I'm going to uh, like answer that question uh, from the table of contents, sort of. Uh, I'm going to talk about uh, safety, predictability, and uh, national and local uh, local goals for cycling. And uh, of course, there are many other answers too. Uh, I'm also going to talk about some remarks on the national standards and the national uh, manuals, and also a little bit about user feedbacks and uh, a, cycli a cyclist survey that we are conducting. Of course, uh, the practice of uh, winter maintenance uh, differs uh, very much across uh, Norway, uh, partly because uh, authorities on national, regional and local levels are using different standards and partly because the ambitions regarding uh, the winter uh, uh, cycling varies, but often due to uh, budget restraints. These differences are, of course, experienced by uh, cyclists on a daily basis. Uh, and uh, I'm also going to uh, have to say that, uh, of course, the weather condition uh, conditions in Norway varies also across the country because we are a, we're a long country, uh, also crossing the polar circle, and uh, we have uh, like the Gulf Current. Uh, so uh, the west coast is the coast is very rainy, but uh, in the north and in in uh, the inner regions of Norway there are uh, more like a harsh normal winter climate. Yes. <coughs> Another key question is, who are you maintaining for? What is a winter maintenance for all ages? And this is a key question, we think. Some of you may know uh, this phrase from uh, Gil Penalosa, 8 and 80. Uh, Morgan has also mentioned it. Um, uh, it's uh, a question if things are good for an 8-year-old and an 8-year-old. It's good for everyone also in between, like me. So, here are two little Vikings. Uh, when uh, this picture was taken, uh, this also happens to be my children. Uh, little one there is my son, uh, five years old, and uh, when the picture was taken, and the other one is my daughter, seven years old. Uh, this uh, bicycle lane, as you see, uh, in red there, uh, is a no-go for children, I think. You see that uh, with the truck there. Uh, even though it's legal for them to use it, it's dangerous when you're not experienced and grown up. So we use uh, the pavement, uh, and uh, that it's legal to use the pavement when cycling in Norway. Uh, and right here it's okay because it's hard and the pedestrians at all, but uh, closer to the city the pavements uh, get uh, more crowded. Uh, well, as you see, it's fall when this uh, picture was taken, but uh, suddenly winter kicks in. As you can see, uh, the bicycle lane here is uh, pretty well winter maintained. And uh, it's because this is one of uh, the high standard uh, routes uh, for the municipality of Oslo. But as you can see also, the pavement is getting narrower. I can go back to how it is without snow. You see, it's not very much left of it. So, uh, these conditions last for about a month or so, and then more snow. As you can see, uh, the bicycle lane is still pretty good, but the pavement, uh, pavement is no longer winter maintained. So, is this winter maintenance uh, for 8 and 80? No, it's not. And further on, when we come uh, further on there, we meet an elderly woman walking in the bicycle lane because of the bad conditions on the pavement. This is bad for her. And it's bad for the cyclists and it's bad for the motorists having to share space with both cyclists and pedestrians. 
So the most important lesson is to think 8 and 80, and this is our perspective. Yes, I'm also going to mention something about road safety. Uh, the Institute of uh, Transport Economics in uh, Norway, uh, uh, a science center, uh, states that uh, between 20 and 30 percent of cyclists often experiences high risk for dangerous accidents due to bad road surface or, uh, or weather conditions. Uh, I think uh, they mean like five to seven times uh, each season. Um, uh, according to the emergency clinic in Oslo, sleep accidents by bike are generally, generally more severe than other accidents. And uh, of course there are fewer accidents uh, during winter because uh, not, uh, there are not so much uh, cyclists then, but the risk per cyclist is uh, higher than during summer. <coughs> and. Uh, they, they are suggesting, of course, that uh, uh, high uh, standard winter and summer maintenance is a very key measure to re reduce accidents. <coughs> winter maintenance and predictability. Of course, uh, as a cyclist, your only concern is to get from A to B in like a safe, easy and predictable manner. And uh, the uh, Institute of Transport Economics uh, has found that between 50 and 75 percent, they have different age categories, so I'll just put them together, um, uh, would have used their bikes more often during winter if the maintenance had been better. And it shows that there is a potential for uh, getting more, uh, get this, uh, winter, existing winter cyclists to use their bike more. But think about also uh, the people who are just like considering to cycle during the winter. It's very important for them. Uh, in Norway, we have uh, some goals for uh, cycling model share, as Morgan also uh, told you. Um, uh, the current model share is about uh, 5%. And uh, the uh, Institute of Transport Economics had uh, looked on this and uh, uh, looked on uh, winter cycling and states that an increase in winter cycling could be a very important contribution in raising the cycling mobile share for the whole year. It's about 2% now who use their bike, uh, the bike mobile share during winter. So, uh, and perhaps also uh, the easiest way to get people cycling more. Maybe not more people cycling, but people who are cycling to cycle more. Um, yes. Uh, and uh, the mold share in Norway have been pretty low uh, since 2001, uh, been uh, about 4 to 5 percent. Of course, for uh, most municipalities, this means that uh, they have to raise the budgets for winter maintenance. Uh, but still, it's maybe cheaper than in the, uh, in the short term than in investing in infrastructure. But of course, both are very important. Yes, in Norway, we have uh, the Norwegian Public Roads Administration uh, uh, is making uh, like a guides and manuals for and uh, guidelines uh, and calls for, uh, for the site uh, for all the roads as also Morgan uh, mentioned and the manual for uh, winter maintenance of uh, the national roads uh, is called uh, R610 and it was um, uh, they made a new one uh, like uh, five or six years ago uh, with uh, much higher ambition uh, for winter maintenance and they have two classifications for winter maintenance of cycling infrastructure. Um, it's two classes. It's the GSA that uh, regards the main cycling network in urban areas and the GSB that's other routes in or outside urban areas. Yes, the main feature of the GSA is black asphalt. Uh, from 6 in the morning to 11 in the evening and uh, use primarily snow plowing and brushing and use of road salt only when needed. 
but in practice, uh, uh, especially in uh, Oslo and cities like Oslo, uh, we have temperatures uh, around zero degrees, so it melts and gets icy, melts and gets icy all the time, so they have to use salt. And they have also a maximum time cycle for measures, that is two hours. So if it's snowing, they have to come back again. And they have to start the measure. Uh, uh, they don't have, they, uh, they don't, uh, they, uh, uh, they can't wait for uh, the snow to like pile up. They have to uh, come uh, uh, immediately. Yes. Um, the main features of the GSB, uh, the like uh, routes more outside the urban areas, are hard or even snow ice cover and uh, also between the hours uh, 6 in the morning and 11 in the evening. Uh, primarily snow plowing, brushing and use of sand before use of road salt. And the side, uh, time, uh, maximum time cycle here is uh, 3 hours. Yes. Uh, we think that the National uh, Manual for uh, Winter Maintenance is, has a high uh, potential for racing uh, the winter maintenance standards in the municipalities and that differs from uh, the uh, design code as uh, Morgan uh, mentioned uh, but one big obstacle here is to coordinate the local, regional and national level uh, around one common standard because if you are cycling in Norway today you can uh, cycle on a uh, pretty well maintained uh, route and suddenly you meet a pile of snow and then you know you're like going uh, over to a, a different uh, <coughs> local level or uh, a regional level uh, road system so yes <coughs> but uh, of course some municipalities also are doing a, job, a good job but um, it varies across the country uh, we are conducting a cyclist survey every second year uh, among our members and we have uh, there a couple of questions about maintenance. Uh, I have to say this is not a scientific uh, survey, it's just a mapping of the super users but it uh, gives us a good indication of uh, how they feel about the conditions. The last survey was done in uh, 2018 and we are going to conduct a new one this year. Yes, uh, the, the, here's a picture for uh, Oslo. How satisfied are you with the wind maintenance of the cycling infrastructure? And if we like to look at the satisfied rate here, uh, it's uh, approximately 20%. Uh, Oslo is not following the national standards for wind maintenance. But Oslo, uh, I have to say, is improving uh, by including more roads for high standard wind maintenance every year. Uh, they had like uh, 80 km kilometers uh, the winter of 2017-18 uh, and uh, raised it to 120 kilometers uh, the winter 2018-19. Uh, yes. But uh, if you move on to the second largest city, Bergen, you see uh, the satisfied rate uh, is uh, going up to 25%. Uh, of course, there are different climates in uh, Bergen, not uh, very snow at all, uh, mostly rain during winter, but they have uh, difficulties with uh, icing. And Bergen is following the national standard uh, for winter maintenance. If you move on to Trondheim, the third largest uh, city, uh, you see that uh, the satisfied uh, uh, are raising to uh, almost 32 uh, percent, and uh, Trondheim is uh, further on the uh, north and uh, have more snow, but they also are following uh, uh, the national standards for winter maintenance. If you move on to Stavanger, uh, it's uh, also a city a bit more uh, south, southwest of uh, in Norway. You see that the uh, uh, satisfied uh, rate is going up to 37%. Of course, also Savagnan don't have very much snow, but uh, difficulties with the icing, of course, and is following the national standards uh, for winter uh, maintenance. 
this is not to say that it's like a scientific causality between those two, but it's a connection we are sure of. Yes. Feedback from the road users are very important. Uh, and we, there are both free and key to get uh, user experience of the roads. So feedback uh, from the road uh, users can be a very good helping hand for professional inspections. Uh, for where to go, why and how often. So, um, and most municipalities in Norway have web portals or mailboxes for user feedback uh, on uh, the conditions on the roads. Uh, but it uh, differs. Uh, but from a user perspective, when you are out cycling, uh, who uh, owns the road you are using? The, uh, the cyclists don't know because there are no signs telling you. So, uh, therefore, we are lobbying for a national web portal for user feedbacks. Uh, so, people can just file a complaint and uh, it uh, gets uh, sent to the right uh, authority. Yes. A uh, question that uh, often also is, um, is coming up in Norway is uh, that you, it's important to plan and build infrastructure that can easily be winter maintained. And of course, uh, this can be a wise thing to do. Uh, because uh, when you are uh, winter maintaining the main road, you can use the same machine on the cycling infrastructure. But still, public administration can also push the markets to deliver equipment uh, for any need. And when I talk to the maintenance guys in, uh, in the municipality of Oslo, they, they are saying that we can get the equipment we need for any type of situation and, uh, and width of the, of the cycling infrastructure, but of course it will cost. So, let's conclude. Does this picture show winter maintenance for all ages, 8 and 80? Of course, no, as I said. But uh, our perspective is uh, that you have to take care of the pedestrians first, then cyclists, and then public transport and other motorists in that uh, manner. If not, the end result will be bad for everyone. But still, high winter maintenance uh, standards works. Uh, of course, uh, cycling mobile share will vary from the weather conditions from year to year. But the tendency, for example, in Oslo is very good. In uh, 2014 and uh, 2015, that winter, when there was uh, not maintained at, uh, at, maintained at all, as we saw from the picture from uh, Morgan. But uh, they have been doing a lot since then, as I showed you. Uh, they have uh, last winter they have been maintaining 120 kilometers at the high standard, and also in that period from uh, 2014 to 2018. Uh, there uh, have been an increase of uh, winter cyclists of 58%. So, of course, it works. Yes. Thank you. I have a feeling that it is very interesting to see that it is a process. Že to nie je o tom, že všetko to funguje ideálne, ale že tam stále nejaký feedback, nejaká snaha tie veci pozvať dopredu a učiť sa. Máme priestor na pár otázok a ja len chcem pomenovať to, že my sme slúbili skončiť do 12. My máme možnosť tu dostať ešte trošku dlhšie tejto miestnosti, takže ak niekto potrebuje odísť šárk o 12. Pokojne sa zvedíte, odíte, my možno, že pár minút natiahneme. Nebude to dlhé, ale chceme využiť prítomnosť našich norských hostí. Takže otázky, komentáre, čokoľvek, nech sa páči. Tak.
Hi, I would like to ask you, do you soak or some liquid uh, things on the snow or just something? Uh, once again. Like, uh, I would like to ask you when you, when you have the winter maintenance, if you use soap or just uh, liquid or something special or... They are doing some research, uh, research on uh, the different salt solutions uh, in Oslo, but they haven't like concluded yet. The only thing I know that uh, they will be trying a more environmental friendly solution. That, uh, but it costs, of course, more. But uh, if you follow the national standards, you, uh, you shall remove snow uh, physically first with uh, snow plowing or brushing. And salt is only uh, um, a solution to uh, keep the black asphalt. So they don't, uh, because if you are salting on top of uh, on the snow that's already there, you get even worse conditions than uh, if the, if you have uh, just let the snow be as it are. It, it, it is yes. <laughs> Igor is actually from the biggest district of Bratislava, on the opposite side of the city yesterday, so he's currently facing uh, the challenges mm. uh, connected with uh, winter maintenance. Uh, ja som si nevšimla, niekto sa ešte iný hlásil, prosím. Maybe one more question. Like you say, like you don't have uh, like special tools or the machines for the cycling path. Yeah. Like you have to uh, order some, uh, something like from the factory or something like that because we like the city part, we order something from the Finland. If you want, I can send you some links. <laughs> 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 Okay, so, so they have ordered already some snow plow yeah. for the bike lane yeah. in Finland yeah. and they would prefer some recommendations or links if you have any. Okay, yeah. I'm not sure, but I can give information and contact information to the guys working with it in, uh, in Oslo and Norway because uh, they know the specifics and the details on the equipment they use. But my point was more to say that uh, as a municipality, uh, you can like push the market to uh, deliver uh, stuff that's not invented yet. Like if you need new stuff, ask for it. So maybe they can uh, develop. Yeah. A vidím, že viacerí rozumeli, že aj samozprávy môžu vytvárať tú takúto požiadavku a podporovať ten trh tým, že budú vlastne dávať nejaké objednávky na tie technológie, ktoré potrebujú. Uh, Tomáš, ty stojíš, pretože chceš niečo povedať? Alebo nie? OK. Dobre, nech sa páči, poďme Ivan. When you show your, your children on the road, on the side lane, uh, do they feel safe and the drivers, they go slower? Or how they behave, the drivers? Uh, on the road I'm, uh, I'm showing you, there are like... Uh, the speed limits, uh, the limit is 50, but there are no like physical uh, measures to keep the uh, speed down. So many are driving faster. But of course, when we are using the pay payments, we have also like the buffer uh, with the, the cycle lane, and that is also like uh, a quality for the, uh, the users of the payments. May I ask you, do you use uh, on the cycling paths uh, cars with uh, rotating brushes or only blows? Oh, that's a <laughs> So, do you use uh, cars for maintenance? Do you use uh, cars with uh, rotating brushes yes. or blows? Both, but uh, <laughs> to get uh, a high maintenance standard, you often uh, have to use the brushes. Uh, first and uh, at once uh, when it starts snowing. So uh, plowing is like better when uh, the snow already have been piled up, I guess. So, uh, uh, but with the, uh, with the standard you have to go uh, immediately when it starts snowing and then you can uh, uh, use the brushes more easily. And often they are using if the weather conditions is like that, they are using, uh, like in, uh, in Finland, they use the brushes and they are salting at the same time. So, to keep black asphalt. 
but of course uh, the GSB standard, uh, uh, it's okay with a, a hard ice cover uh, or a snow cover. Tu máme ještě jednu otázku, poprosím mikrofon. A já vám povím, že je fajn si připomínat, že oni si položili vlastně otázku, že jakým způsobem můžu dosáhnout to vyšší procento, to plánované procento přístavů na cestách a že tam se vypadá naozaj přístroj i posledních těch zimních přístavů. So hello, uh, I'm the first that I can say uh, good afternoon, because it's well, well. Um, I would like to ask, uh, because Norway has abundance of green energy from hydro, water and many more, uh, if you have experimented with heating the bike lanes, the bike paths, that uh, is in discussions, uh, but you could also use like uh, when you uh, use uh, pipelines for heating to buildings you can uh, like build them underneath uh, the, the cycling infrastructure so i think it's a, a, a big potential so uh, but uh, it's not uh, like on a big scale okay, so a few kilometers yeah maybe Dajme poslednú otázku a máme tu potom ešte jeden prístavok avizovaný od Petra Kločku, takže ak chce ešte kto položiť nejakú otázku alebo vyjadriť svoj názor, nech sa páči. Okay, nie. Tak, tak Peter je taký poslov dobrých správ a informácií pre nás. Peter, prišiel si s nejakou dobrou správou, nech sa páči. Ja sa ospravedlňujem v prvom všetkým, že som tu tak dnes nekoordinovane pobehoval, telefón podobne, ale nech mi norské priatelia, cyklisti odpustie, ale súvisí to s témou. Dobrá správa je tá, že výzva, ktorá bola e, donedávna vonku na žiadosti o dotácie na cyklistickú dopravu, je už v štádiu takom, že by sme mohli a kolega Braňo Laurinec, ten sympatický mladý muž zelenom, ktorý sa na tom podielal najviac, môže potvrdiť, že zajtra na neskôršie pondelok by mala byť vonku oficiálne už vyhodnotenie výzvy a tak, jak to bolo na začiatku, že tam bola 0 eur, potom 6 miliónov, potom 12,5, tak teraz najnovšia informácia, že by to mohlo byť 13,1 milióna eur. Počkajme si oficiálne na, na uverenie, zajtra má pán minister Ranejky s novinármi, Pevne verím, že tam štú, táto informácia pôjde von. 87% z podaných žiadostí by malo byť uspokojených s týmito 13,1 miliónmi. A ja len chcem veriť spolu s vami, a tu vás chcem aj poprosiť o takú podporu, do budúcnosti, aby to nebolo ad hoc financovanie, že našli sa zrazu peniaze aj pre tých bláznivých cyklistov, čo stále otravujú, ale pomôžte mi v tom, ja sa vám budem ozývať, aby to bol systémový krok, aby každý rok mali primátory a starostovia a predsedovia samozprávnych krajov víziu a teda podporu v tom, že budú vedieť, že na tento a na tento rok budú takéto a takéto peniaze, aby si mohli dopredu pripravovať projekty, lebo iba kvalitné projekty majú šancu na, šancu na úspech. Takže takto dobrá správa je, pevne verím, už tesne už pred vyhlásením, a spoločne robme na tom, aby, aby, tie, aby tie peniazy boli pravidelne čo najskôr každý rok. A ešte jedna vec, pardon, nechcem to rozdržiavať. Blíži sa nám kampaň do školy na... Do práce na bicykli. Vidíte, ak sa mi to krásne spája. Čiže už pôjde teraz už 7. ročník celom na celonárodnej úrovni. Poprosím vás, tak ako ste tu z jednotlivých kútov Slovenska, ale tak, kde máte možnosti, Vplývajte na svojich primátorov, starostov, aby sa čo najskôr do kampane prihlásili. A to znamená, už od 1. marca bude možnosť, zli za chvíľočku dostanete, budeme to dávať aj v elektronickej podobe. Len to včasné prihlásenie sa má potom význam aj pre nás, pre organizátorov, aby vám čas vedeli dať trička, aby, aby nás bolo čo najviac. Inými slovami, končím poslednými dvomi vetami, tie kampane majú zmysel, pretože aj na základe týchto kampaní sme mohli nastaviť výzvy a vlastne otravovať, aby sa našli v šuplíku peniaze. Ďakujem za možnosť predať túto dobrú správu. Ak to informuje, tak ja by som vás chcel informovať teda v zásade všetkých, ale 
Ústu Bratislavčanov, že akurát dneska som založil nový kanál, oficiálny bratislavský facebookový, možno že prvý slovenský, kde, ktorý bude zahraný iba na cyklodopravu, teda samozrejme aj na nejakú pešiu. A volá sa Bicyklu v Bratislavu. Ešte tam není ani cover, obrázok nič. Čiže a to prečo? Čože? A to prečo? No to, lebo teraz som ho založil dneska ráno. A, ale to príbudne je asi prvý, čo to viete, čiže keď uh, používate Facebook, tak môžete polajkovať Bicyklu v Bratislava a budem tam dávať také niektoré tie, nielen ja, ale budú tam aj také tie menšie veci, ktoré sa na oficiálny bratislavský kanál nevojdú, to znamená, povedzme, nejaké nainštalované cyklostrany a teda, a teda také tie menšie správy aj aj menšie samozrejme. Odíde a ja mám poslednú vec a potom tie dáš len také, že posledné, že goodbye. A toto nie je, tak teraz mám, že unfinished business, že čokoľvek vlastne, čo som si ja zobrala z tých prezentácií, ktoré tu zaznel, či to bolo od Marca, od Rora, od Morgana, bolo, že je to stále vlastne work in progress and in process. Ale aj veci ako, že pomoc detskám, aby nemuseli nosiť ťažké dažky do školy, alebo pomoc samozpráve, mať patronát nad dopravnými značkami a zobrať trošku viacej moci tej dopravnej policii, ktorá nám mnohé veci blokuje, je významnou vecou. Ja, ja vám všetkým ďakujem a teraz to úplne, úplne posledné slovo už na nech sa páči. Ďakujem. Uh, ďakujem vám veľmi pekne všetkým, že ste dneska prišli. Uh, Toto je vlastne teda ten záver ešte, čo by som tak možno pozval, že kde nás môžete najbližšie stretnúť, tak v stredu, to je taká lokálnejšia téma, v stredu v klube pod lampou o 7 hodine večer bude, bude diskusia na tému budúcnosti Dunajského nábrežia a pohybu chodcov a cyklistov na Dunajskom nábreží a bude tam teda už nám prísobili počas zastupcovia a magistrátu starého mesta a Karlovej si developeri, ktorí tam operujú, sú tiež oslovení. Takže ste srdečne vítaní. A zároveň aj v duchu toho, čo napríklad Peťo hovoril, budeme veľmi radi, keď sa nám budete ozývať, či už zo škôl alebo samozpráv, veľmi radi poradíme každému, pomôžeme, ako urobiť spolu tie, tie mesta a obce bezpečnejšími. To je tak na záver všetko, keď chcete ešte si dajte kávu, Ľudia sa tu môžete ďalej pohybovať, rozprávať a ďakujem veľmi pekne.